With an applique or overlay stitch, um, there's different words for it, and certainly different tribes used it more. It was used more in the west um, and the northern and western plains. The crows, the, um, all the Assiniboines, Blackfeet, those people all use the overlay stitch. Crees up in Canada, as you go further north, they use that. You need to use a double thread, a needle with a double thread on it, and you also need another needle that has just a single thread on it, which is right here. Here's my single thread, okay? Just one thread, it's folded over and waxed, of course, so it looks like one single thread, but it, and it is, but it's just doubled over there. But you need that. Now, people think, oh my God, what do you mean two needles and thread? Well, you don't need four hands. <laughs> you just use one needle and thread at a time, obviously. So, this doubled thread is going to hold your beads. It's your bead holding thread, okay? And it might be easier for me to show you with these larger beads. How about that? We'll try that. And I'm going to take these right off of the, the hank. I've just loosened one strand, and then I just take them right off the hank. Don't have to scoop up the loose ones. It's all tidy and nice. Try that again. And then when you're done, just knot this and, and uh, make sure that your beads don't fall off of that one loose thread. There we go. So, now we've got, the, this is your thread that's holding the beads. So, you just kind of throw that to the side. The hard thing with this, the most difficult thing, I think with the applique stitch is figuring out how to hold it, to make it go where you want. And you just, I use, hold it from these, between these two and these two, like generally. With the lane or lazy stitch, you can just nick the top of the thread like this to, to, to sew the beads down, and you're just using one thread anyway. Not for this one, you need to go all the way through. Okay? So I'm going to come up here, right past the first bead, in between, always come up in between the beads, and I'm coming up. This is my single thread, and I'm going to go down right across from it, directly across from it, because if you don't do that, you're going to create a gap. Okay? And you just pull that down, and you just snug it. You don't have to pull it too tight. Just kind of snug it. Always try to come up on the same side, just for some consistency. It'll keep your work looking nicer and go down on the same side, on the other side, opposite from it, but up on one side, down on the other. Keep, be consistent about that if you can. It's not the end of the world if you can. not But try to do that. There you go. Now, do you see the problem with this? As you get further along on this, this unit here, this line of so that you're sewing down, you're not being able to tell where you were. So, and rather than count, just go every couple beads, but I'm going to show you a way to work with that aspect of not of remembering where you were on your line of beads. And this thing will always kind of get in your way. You've got to be just careful of that. Okay, so I came up there. I'm going to go down there. But I'm not going to pull it all the way down. I'm going to leave a little thread loop up. That little loop right there. Okay? That shows me where I was. So that when I go up on this side, that this, now this time, I'm going to pull that down. And that snugs up that thread. So now, I know where I was. You see that? And right here, you go down. And you got to kind of keep this 
taut or however you want it. If you want to make a curve or whatever you want to do. We're just doing it straight here just for the sake of demonstrating. And the first row and your outline rows of applique are a little, it's, they're, they're trickier because they roll around a little bit until you get them down. So I left that little loop up. You can see that little thread loop, I hope. Should have used maybe a darker thread. And then I'm just going a couple beads up. Don't count. It'll stop being fun if you count, if you get all compulsive about it. And now I'm going to pull that down, and there we go. Okay, I'm going to go in there. And I'm going to leave that up. And I'm going to leave that little loop up. And I'm going to go over there. Leaving that loop up. Down we go. Pull it tight. There we go. See? It's just so easy. This is really a nice way. This hand will cramp on you until you kind of get comfortable and figure out how you want to hold things. But I like this stitch because you can use different sizes of beads. You can work on different pieces, different parts. You know, you can work on, do your outline, and then you can work on this part. And then if you want, you can skip up to here. I mean, you can do anything you want. You can go all over the place with it. That's how this was made. That's how this was made. A little tornado bag. Okay. Now that one I pulled down tight, but I kind of remember where I was. Sometimes you have to do that. It doesn't help if you look away from it. Then someday you just can do this until approximately where you were. And just do it again. Up and down. There we go. I find this a little more relaxing because I don't have to count all those beads. Like you have to kind of be panicked about having your beads the same size if you're looming or if you're doing lazy stitch. Or the size of your, this, by the same size, I kind of mean the same size as to make your rows look nice. Okay, then we're going to go up here. Every two beads is okay. If you're on a tight curve, you might want to do it every bead. But I think every two, and certainly right before the end. But about every two beads, I mean, my gosh, you can't, who wants to do a stitch with every bead? Yuck. That would get old. Pretty fast, I'm thinking. Okay, now I'm, now I'm getting towards the end, so I'm going to kind of turn it around and jam it with my fingernail. I know where I'm at. And I've got, I'm two towards the end, so I'm going to just come up two away from the end. See that? I'm going to go down there. Okay, now what I like to do when I get to the, towards the end, if I'm going to tie this off, tie it off the same way, you go down. This is your doubled thread now, and it's hard sometimes, don't get your threads together. I mean, keep your threads like sort of laying off to the side. I'm going to tie this off. 
like so. One stitch is all it takes. A little nipper, guys. And here's how you make a little knot on the bottom. You just roll it off. There you go. Nice little knot. Grandma's pin cushion over there. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to come up here well, for my last stitch because I like to do certainly do the, the one to keep it tight right at the end. Okay, so there we go. And there you have it. And see how nice and tight that is? See? Now when you put those beads up um, along next another row next to it, it will it will lay it will be much easier and it will if you use it as a fill-in stitch with with with, uh, with when they have little beads right next to each other. Another row like right lying right next to it. The only trick to that is you come up, you come up in between the beads. You don't go down, you come up in between the beads. And I'm going to turn this over and I'm also going to, this is my single thread. And I'm going to, let's see, get that tied off. There we have it. It's <laughs> And then... Kevin! Did he poke his finger yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> there we have it. Okay. So. And then you just repeat that a few hundred times and you'll have some. <laughs> okay.